The definition of well-being has changed over the years, really as health has evolved. It's certainly no longer just about the physical, it's about all aspects of our lives that make us healthy, happy, and satisfied individuals. Today's focus was on how do we create a culture of well-being. We invited different speakers from all facets of, of business and of public health to talk about what their perspective is in helping us create a true culture of well-being. One of our chief findings is that people are approaching well-being in isolation. We're living in a modern well-being dilemma. The things that we want to accomplish in well-being simply can't be done by ourselves. Well, no one experienced firsthand the power of community coming together for health than our first presenter. Nancy Freights is the mother of Pete Freights, who was diagnosed with ALS in 2012. After Pete's diagnosis, Nancy and her family started working tirelessly to raise awareness about ALS and increase funding for research, which included a little thing you might have heard of at some point in time <laughs> called the Ice Bucket Challenge. Back at that dining room table after diagnosis, his words were, this is my new team. What an amazing opportunity we have to change the world. Together, we achieved more. It was through community that we shouted from the highest mountain that ALS was an unacceptable situation of no treatment and no cure, and that it needed to be changed. The most important part of that rare condition marketplace is actually people. It's the people who are out there advocating for their own health and wellness and for treatments where no treatments might possibly exist. I think that the barriers that most people face when it comes to their well-being or at least trying to make that move, it's, it's a mental block. Well-being for me means being satisfied with knowing there's a process to progress. It's not about the science. It's not just about, you know, what I learned in school. It's really, really hard to change your lifestyle. Our job on behalf of the communicator is coming up with realistic, manageable ways to deliver the information. We are actually deliberate in using the word building a culture of health because building is something that you do together as a community and so we all want to build a culture of health. It starts with you, everyone in this room, making the healthy decision one decision at a time until it becomes a habit. If you create a habit, out of being great. This is how we create sustainability. As human beings, we're already wired to create automation, to make things easier. So we try to use the habits to empower ourselves with, with wellness, with the tools that we need for optimum well-being. I talked about the need for companies, for organizations, for nonprofits, for individuals, and the media to be bold. What I want to share with you is an example of CVS, a company that made a bold choice to take tobacco out of their stores and they're really making a difference in the public health. Feel Rich, so we are a urban health and wellness media company. What we do is take scientific health information and remix it into engaging and authentic content that empowers the community to start living a healthier life. Brands have such an opportunity today to engage with their customers to help them you know, accomplish their own health and well-being goals. And we help brands figure out how can they do that in a compelling way and in a way that will also help drive the client's business forward.